Well, hello and good morning. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Today is very exciting for me because I am going to try out open acrylics by Golden for the first time ever. And they're supposed to work a little bit more like oil paint. So what it says in this little pamphlet that came with my set, it says they remain wet far longer on the palette during painting sessions. They have excellent blending characteristics, can be used with natural fiber brushes, less wasted paint due to drying and palette loss, and they are available in 80 colors. So they have relaxed working characteristics and it makes them an ideal choice when blending, softening, shading, glazing, and creating fine detail. Oh, so they can also be blended with regular golden acrylic colors, mediums, and gels to control working time. So I assume that means that you can use them with regular acrylics to speed up the drying time. And then for maximum working time, use the open mediums and the thinner so you can extend your working time by using the thinner with the paints. It doesn't say how long you have to work with them before they're dry. So we're going to test that out and see what happens. All right, so let's check out the colors that I got in this set. Okay, so I got the landscape set and I got this one because I liked the colors a little bit better. So this comes with a titanium white, cadmium yellow, yellow ochre, cadmium red light, alizarin crimson, ultramarine blue, manganese blue hue, sap green hue, and it also comes with this open thinner, which will extend the drying time of your acrylic paint. So if you want it to dry a little bit slower, you add a little bit of this. It does not come with the black, so we'll have to make our own black by using ultramarine blue, alizarin crimson, and yellow ochre, which is fine because I kind of want to work with more of a purpley black on the background. I don't want to have a straight up neutral monochromatic background. All right, so we are going to be doing a rather simple painting because I've never used these paints before. So I went on to unsplash.com, which is where you can find a lot of royalty-free references. And I found this cute Baltimore Oriole and I printed him out on 11 by 14 inch paper, um, which I happen to have a large format printer. If you don't, it's fine. This method of what I'm gonna show you is going to work on regular printer paper as long as you have the right aspect ratio that matches your canvas. So I'm going to be working on 11 by 14 inch canvas. So the aspect ratio is very close to a four or five ratio, but I happen to have 11 by 14 inch paper. So I printed it out on this because I want to show you a comparison between the drawing and this, and it's going to be a lot easier to do that when they're the same size. And I'm going to show you a method for getting your drawing on a canvas and I'm going to be using a black canvas. So I'm going to be using a white charcoal pencil in order to do this drawing and a grid method that is a lot easier than the regular squares. So this grid method is one that I find to be really helpful. And you can see that I have line going from corner to corner. And then I have a line going down the center vertically and one going across horizontally. When you do the same thing on your canvas, then it's going to make it a lot easier to see the shapes because not only do you look at the shape of the bird, but you're also going to look at the shape of the empty space around the bird. And it's gonna make it a lot easier for you to match that up with your reference photo. The great thing about this grid method is that it doesn't require any measuring. You just start with straight lines from corner to corner and voila, you have your center. Then you follow it with your horizontal and your vertical lines and you're done. And because this grid finds the center of your reference for you, it makes it far easier to get an idea as to where all the parts of your subject are going to be placed. And when you're working on a black canvas, white charcoal is extremely forgiving and great to work with because if you make any mistakes, they can easily be erased with a damp paper towel. So if you've never worked with this grid method before, I would start on a smaller canvas. If you decide to try it on a larger canvas, I suggest investing in a proportional art divider to help you with accuracy, especially if your reference photo is far smaller than your canvas and you need to transfer scale. If you've never heard of a proportional divider, it's a tool used by architects. It's like one of those little metal tools. You don't have to invest in a metal one, which can cost up to $300. Fortunately for us, there are cheaper versions made for artists that cost around $20. And I find the plastic dividers are far better than the wooden ones. 
Accuracy is a company that makes a really good plastic proportional divider and it won't break the bank. To be honest with you, I hate square grids and I never use them because they just make such a mess on the canvas. They're time consuming, not only to draw out, but also to erase. But this grid used in conjunction with a proportional divider not only saves time, but it also improves your drawing skills and you don't have as many lines to deal with after your drawing has been completed. I'm not using a proportional divider on this canvas because it's so small and I can just kind of eyeball it. I'm not as concerned about having an accurate rendering of the tree branch. I'm more concerned with having an accurate rendering of the Oriole. So I just get the general shapes on there and you'll see in the comparison that they don't match exactly, but it serves its purpose and that's all that matters. And there we have it, the general outline, which is pretty close to the reference. Now it's time for the fun part. I started off mixing equal amounts of alizarin crimson, ultramarine blue, and yellow ochre in the open acrylics, which gave me this really dark, deep purple color. And then I added a little bit of titanium white to get the lighter purple shade for the bokeh or bokeh background, however you want to pronounce that. I mixed a good amount of this base color of yellow ochre, ultramarine blue, and alizarin crimson because I'm going to be using this base color throughout this entire painting, not just on the background. I'll just be using variations of it by adding different colors to it for a lot of the grays and the darks of the bird. So just to start off though with how this paint performs. I was immediately struck by how buttery the consistency of the paint was compared to regular acrylics. I didn't add any thinner to start with because I wanted to see how the paint acted without it and I was pleasantly surprised. So the blendability of the paint is pretty amazing. I wouldn't say it's just like oil paint, more like a hybrid of oil and acrylic without the oil and the paint does get tacky if you don't add the thinner to it. So. If you're going to be working on large areas, I would suggest adding thinner if you're going to be blending large areas. But for this small painting, I really didn't use any thinner on the background at all. I just went in straight with the paint and I blended the dark into the light, light into the dark, and I didn't have any problem with it. In fact, after I was done painting the background, it was still wet for a good 25 minutes and then it got tacky. Of course, the day that I was working on this too, it was raining outside, it, the humidity was pretty high, it wasn't particularly warm, but it wasn't particularly cold, so I would say that the relative humidity will affect how quickly your acrylic paint dries, the golden open acrylics, but um, that's something that you'll have to play with. I live in the northeast, so we have really humid summers, and we have pretty dry winters, so you know, it depends on where you are and what the relative humidity is, I would say. So you, you have to experiment with that. It's so strange working with an acrylic paint and not having to constantly mist the canvas to get colors to blend, which is a pain. And that's usually why I do use oil paint is because when you want to blend areas or you want to soften edges, oil paint is really the best to use. But this was surprisingly easy. Um, so right here I've added a little bit more titanium white to the original mixture in order to get those really light lights and that's what I'm doing is I'm basically using um, variation on this base color in order to put in these grays of the bird so it actually kind of creates this illusion that there's gray. But one thing I did have to do was I had to use regular acrylic Mars Black to get some of the really darks in there because this set does not come with a black. So if you do get these open acrylics, I would suggest ordering a black if you do need to get some really dark darks in there. Um, and because I'm working on a black acrylic background, and it, it just helps amp up those darks and create more of that contrast. But 
what I am also doing is there are certain parts of it where I started to add in a little bit more ultramarine blue to get more of a blue tone or I would add in a little bit more yellow ochre to kind of make that purple a little grayer. For instance, right here, I've added a little bit of the manganese blue hue to that base color to change the color of the beak a little bit to more of this um, almost like aqua, light aqua gray. And that really kind of helps distinguish between the different parts of the bird as well. One thing that I will say too about getting a black is that it will help to gray down your colors a little bit. So yeah, definitely get a black with whatever set of golden open acrylics and you can buy them by themselves too i mean you can get whatever colors you want online but i find that working with a set right away is actually far cheaper um, because you get a variety of colors for one set price as opposed to buying larger tubes especially if you're just trying these out for the first time what if you hate them definitely i would order this set um, the set comes with a good variety of colors and you can add on a couple of other colors if you want to. Now, when putting the brights on, I did want to test out to see how transparent those golden open acrylics would be. So this is the point where I had to lighten up the areas of the bird that were the lightest with a regular titanium white acrylic because it would dry faster and then I would be able to paint over it with the bright open acrylics. So the cool thing about these acrylics is that you can use them in conjunction with regular acrylics which is extremely handy because you can control your drying time a little bit more and that paint that I added to it, the regular titanium white acrylic, which was a heavy body acrylic to cover up that black to really lighten and brighten that up. It, it dried, it dried in like 10 minutes because there was a little bit of the open acrylics that were already mixed onto the canvas. And that just made it so much easier. This is a really cool aspect of these paints is that you can use them with regular acrylics and you can amp up your drying time if you need to and then layer on top of it with the open acrylics. The open acrylics too are great for glazing. Um, you can really glaze with those transparent colors because they actually are pretty transparent. Uh, the white is very, very white. So if you want to make it more opaque obviously the white has great coverage but the other colors are pretty transparent which is great if you're using them over a very light color and you can kind of build on that color as you need to and blend as you need to one of the other things that's great about these um, golden open acrylics is that if you look at the tip of the tail, I was able to blur those edges a little bit because that part of the bird is farther away. And in the reference photo, that part of the tail is a little bit blurry. And you cannot do that really well with regular acrylics. So you can make something look more photorealistic by being able to blur some of the edges out and still have some of your hard lines and hard edges as well. That's something that is really difficult to achieve with regular acrylics and you can achieve it with these acrylics which I think is extremely beneficial. The cadmium red, orange, and yellow are really vibrant with the cadmium red being pretty opaque. I used alizarin crimson mixed with the cadmium red for the shadows of the underbelly. The most challenging part for me in any bird painting are always the feet. The temptation to attempt detail on something so small is something I have to fight against. 
Believe it or not, when it comes to bird feet, the less focused you are on the detail, the better. The feet will actually look more realistic if you focus more on the light and the shadow in the small shapes that you see. Our overactive minds are really good at imagining details that really aren't present in the reference photo. And as you can see, I had to take a break from the bird feet and work on the branch because I hate painting bird feet. I'm some, someday I'm going to love painting bird feet. It's going to be one of my favorite things to do in the whole entire world. But right now, at present, not so much. So I definitely left the bird feet to kind of the last thing that I was doing on this painting. First off, I just want to say I am blown away by these paints. <laughs> um, they're amazing. They're buttery and it looks like an oil painting. I'm not going to lie, I was a little skeptical, I was a little concerned and uh, whoa, it's absolutely stunning. So. I don't usually paint photorealism. This isn't something that I normally do, but the fact that you can with these paints is absolutely amazing. The only um, thing I ended up doing though was I did mix in regular acrylic Mars black because the landscape kit doesn't come with black. I did have to use regular acrylic that dries really fast for all of the lighter parts of the bird so that you could see the yellows and the oranges really brightly. So I had to paint underneath that first and then add the reds and the oranges and the yellows. Aside from that, I only used the colors that came in the box and I uh, used every single color that came in the box. And they're amazing and I love them and I highly recommend them. So that is my five star review and I am not sponsored by Golden Open Acrylics or anything, but wow. I am so impressed. I'm absolutely impressed. Anyway, if you like this video, please hit the like button. Please subscribe if you haven't already subscribed. I love you guys and I will see you next time. Bye.